In our world, we have lots of different views and opinions. Even people within our own families or our own congregations have many different views, and that's to be expected. We're all distinctive people with different experiences. Many of us come from different backgrounds and have very different personalities. But regardless of who we are, every single one of us is called to live out a faith that can be observed by other people. Hey there everyone, my name is Dwayne Bryant. It's wonderful to have you back with us again today. If you haven't subscribed to this channel already, just hit that subscribe button in the lower right hand corner of your screen, click the bell, and you will get an email notification every time I post something new. Today we're talking about living out our faith so that it can be seen by other people. And this means more than just praying at meals when we're out in public or reading our Bible out in the open at Starbucks. At the same time, it's not for displaying our piety for all the world to see. We're not doing it to be praised on one hand or on the other to get on anybody's nerves. As Christians, we're called to live out our faith where others can see it. In the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says that we are to be salt and light. He says, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people put a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Now we have to take care how we live in public, because we can't do anything that looks like we're just simply putting on a display for the sake of impressing other people. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says that we are to pray with some degree of privacy. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Jesus contrasts genuine prayer with what the Pharisees did, which was probably intended to show everyone how holy and righteous they were. Scholars think that they may have even timed their comings and goings so that when time for prayer rolled around, they would be in public places for maximum exposure where everyone could see them and admire their religiosity. Now that kind of thing is what we want to avoid because that's not motivated by faith it's motivated by pride. So, when it comes to living out our faith, we have three options. First of all, we can hide who we are. Maybe we're scared what others are going to think about us. Maybe that we're strange or weird. So we hide our Christianity as a kind of defense mechanism. Now, I think this is a deliberate defiance of what God wants. We can, we can go to the Old Testament for some parallel teaching about this. Ancient Israel, for instance was supposed to be a light to the nations. And I think the church today should be too. Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 6 says, I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Well, this has always been God's plan for his people. Other people still need salvation. And the church should be a light in a dark world to tell others where Christ can be found. Now we can go to the opposite end of the spectrum and speak out so that people can't miss us. We can get their attention by being outrageous or annoying. We can live so that other people can't help but notice us. But is this doing God's will? Now, I've known people, and maybe you have too. They like to get in your face. They don't seem to have a diplomatic bone in their body. And so you see that these people have to be outrageous in order to get attention, even if it rubs someone the wrong way. But, I mean, I'll be honest with you. God doesn't need shock jock evangelists. The third way is to simply be authentic. Live your life God's way. Don't hide because you might prevent yourself from making a good impression on someone else and influencing them for the better. Don't get in people's faces because that's off-putting. Live your life where people can see Christ in you. And you never know. It might make someone curious enough that they will ask you how they can be like you. Everyone, thanks for spending a little bit of your day with me. We'll see you next time.